Most people focus on tannins, botanicals, leaves, and color, but hardly anyone talks about the one thing that actually keeps a blackwater aquarium alive, flow. And here's the fun bit. Flow in your aquarium is nothing like flow in natural blackwater rivers. It's way weaker, way flatter, and way more predictable. And that difference changes everything about how your fish behave. So today we're breaking down the real reason flow matters, what good flow actually looks like and how to fix the problems almost everyone has with their blackwater setup without needing to buy anything new. Now, if you watched the last episode on lighting, this is a perfect follow-up because light and flow work together. Change one and the other behaves differently. And trust me, most people don't realize the effect flow has on stress levels, oxygen, and even the breakdown of your botanicals. All right, let's start here. Flow isn't about making your tank look dramatic, it's about keeping the environment alive. In the wild, blackwater streams are constantly moving, even the calm ones, so it's not a static puddle, it's always pulling oxygen in and pushing waste out and reshaping the riverbed. And yet, most aquariums, including mine, in the past just sit there. A gentle sort of flow of plants maybe, but nothing close to what fish evolved in. Blackwater rivers and streams move in layers. Near the surface, they're fast and chaotic. Mid-water, they're slower and more stable. And down low, around branches and root tangles, the water curls, spins, and drops debris into pockets. That movement does three important things. It oxygenates the water continuously, it pushes waste downstream so it doesn't smother the habitat, and it constantly rearranges mulm, sand, leaves, and botanicals, making the landscape dynamic. And here's the fun bit, that dynamic landscape is what makes fish behave naturally. They follow currents, rest in low flow pockets, and feed on microorganisms trapped in eddies. Everything is tied to movement. Now here's the honest bit that most people don't say out loud. Blackwater absolutely destroys filters. Leaves soften, pods break down, and mom builds up, and your filter output gets just absolutely destroyed. Most people think something's wrong with the filter, but no, it's just overwhelmed with debris. And when your filter clogs, your flow drops, oxygen drops, mom settles, and you get dead zones. It's a domino effect and it happens in every black water tank eventually. Now, of course, if you know me, I like to back this up with real science, not just hobby talk. There's a study published in the Journal of Fish Biology where researchers observed how fish behavior changed based on water movement and the results were pretty clear. Fish in low flow tanks showed significantly higher stress behaviors, things like reduced schooling, more hiding and less foraging but introduce a moderate, stable current and their behavior immediately shifted to what you'd see in nature. This is exactly why flow isn't optional in a blackwater setup, it's part of the ecosystem. And remember, blackwater isn't a fast river, it's gentle, warm, diffused flow. Most people think they need to avoid flow completely, but fish are evolved to use it. This is why I often use flow pumps or small wave makers in some of my setups. They don't clog and they usually keep the water moving more naturally. And they do the same job nature does, they keep things alive. I do still run filters for many of my other tanks, um, such as sponge filters and that, but flow devices usually do the heavy lifting. So here's the thing, rivers change every second, aquariums don't. And they also pull fresh water in consistently, which again, aquariums don't. So the challenge with blackwater aquariums isn't just about replicating the color or the mood, it's replicating the movement, because flow is what makes the whole system function. Here's the part you'll probably recognize, and I'm guilty of it too. Most people aim the filter straight across the tank, thinking they're getting solid flow, but what actually happens is turbulence right at the top of the water, and dead water everywhere else. Or you get the opposite, a filter pointed down that blasts all the mom into one corner and makes the tank look like a just a complete mess. Neither of these feel anything like a real black water stream. So you don't need fancy gear to fix the flow. Small changes make a huge difference. For example, angling the outflow slightly upward so the water rolls over itself. You can break the surface tension just enough to pull oxygen in without creating a harsh shimmer. Aim the flow along the front glass occasionally, and that can create a curl that keeps detritus moving. Or place driftwood in a way that splits the current naturally. These tiny changes create microcurrents just like root tangles do in the wild. 
And the best part is, you probably won't even see the flow, but your fish will, and they'll act differently almost immediately for it. This might surprise you, but tannins actually change how flow behaves. They thicken the water ever so slightly, they reduce visibility which makes fish rely more on current, and they soften light which changes how fish explore the tank. So flow isn't a separate thing, it's part of the black water formula. So if you're building a black water tank, don't underestimate flow. It does shape behavior, oxygen, mole movement, and even how your botanicals break down over time. And if your fish ever looked a bit off or a little timid, or you thought something was wrong but couldn't figure it out, there's a good chance that flow just wasn't there where it needed to be. So now you understand how flow shapes your blackwater aquarium, but there is one more part of the ecosystem that's just as misunderstood. Substrates. Sand, mud, leaf beds, mulm layers, the stuff everyone gets wrong when creating natural environments. And that's what we're covering in our next episode.